Welcome to Universal Consciousness, where we promote love, light, and consciousness through knowledge. I'm Brother Spear. And I'm Dr. Rahatir. And today we have Aki Tolliver. He's the author of The Greatest Story Ever Stolen, where he explores the stolen legacy of Kush, Kemet, and world religion. Welcome, Aki. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. Good to see you again, my brother. It, uh... It's an honor to have you here on the set with us because uh, all the work that you do and the the work that you've created, man, you, you put your heart and soul into something that's uh, it's an inspiration uh, to us all. So I'm just glad you took time out to spend with us. So again, welcome. Thank okay, you. so we're going to get started. So in a common way that the, the Kim Kemetiu, which are the Egyptians, greet each other, will say, Eu M Hotep. Mm-hmm. And that means I transform myself that you may have peace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's all about changing peace. And then within their names, like Amenhotep mm-hmm. or Akhenaten, you'll either have the sun, Amen, that they're letting you know that they are God. When you say Amen, Amen was the unconceivable, unknowable was where everything came forth and then people named themselves Amen Hotel. Amen's in the name. So they're, they're comfortable saying I'm God. I'm in in the Egyptian text the Asar is is said to be said he's the King of King and Lord of Lords. Lord of That's, Eternity. Right. These are common things that are in the Bible that were said thousands of years before the Bible was created. All right. The king of the hill, that's that's a as well. King of the hill is saying you're the you're you you're the you're God, you're the top of everything. Um you um the re, redeemer, the the savior, this is Haru. These are um synonymous of Jesus when he's the savior, mm-hmm. um the, the savior. Haru had these same attributes and many other um, gods of other cultures because they all came from the Kushite um, spirituality. Mm-hmm. Um, so, let's see, where can I go? Let's, uh, we spoke of the creation story. So, let me speak on that. So, the creation story out of Kush was that you had Tehuti Mayat existed um, in the beginning with atom which is when i say atom ra pata are all interchangeable right they are the creator which is oneself and that's saying that you had a moral compass to live by in your spirit realm that Mm -hmm. always was there that this spirit thing didn't come in the physical realm that the universe has a balance and it's and it just might like Martin Luther King said that it leans toward the moral part. I'm not it's not verbatim, but it mm-hmm. leans towards the moral part um, of, of righteousness. Okay, mm-hmm. so they believe that righteousness, um, being good, um, being corrected, and and leading a a respectful life was who a God supposed to be. Right. Yes, they did have gods that were not the opposite of that, and they recognized that. I can I can name them. Isfit is the opposite of Mayat. You had Satek, which is the op, who was the brother of Asar. He was a mean god. You have uh, the dragon. I mentioned dragons in the book, mm-hmm. so I do under I understand that dragons come from Africa. Those were the original dragons. A Pep was the most popular one. He was an evil dragon. Mm-hmm. And that's who Satek fought. So that's where the hero, these fantasy stories where you have the knight in shiny armor fighting the dragon. There's pictures of Egyptians fighting serpents because the definition of a dragon is a, is a big serpent, which mm-hmm. is a snake. Mm-hmm. But it still it kind of boils down to like fighting yourself. Right. Fight, right. So in Genesis story, you have a dragon and the tree of life and Adam and Eve. So you have good dragons, you have bad dragons. And the dragon, um, I, I talk of the um, Genesis story of, of the Garden of Eden later in the book. 
but all of that is dealing with astronomy okay and astron they took astronomy because they understood they looked at the stars and they recognized that the in the universe that they were studying is themselves mm -hmm. that we are a baby universe right so if you study the big universe right you're, st you're knowing yourself better. Right. So it's the macrocosm, the microcosm. So if you study that, then you understand yourself. Yes. Right. Okay. So we have, um, in the creation story, we have Rahu riding in a solar boat. So they, they understood the cosmos. This is before the stars. The void was a, a watery abyss. Right. So he's riding in a boat. And the and the a boat provides safety and refuge. You know, you won't be attacked by whales or sharks, whatever. Right. So and it's a safe passage. So the boat there's many boats in Egypt. And you see there's boats on the wall on yeah. the walls behind us. The boat of the there's the boat of Coke Khufu that's next to Khufu's pyramid in Egypt. So he had a solar boat, that's a spiritual boat. Oh, right. And that's the boat that he this is all allegory. And anybody knows what an allegory is? Something to represent something. Right. Mm -hmm. So why why do you think our ancestors used allegory? Well, because, they, you know, they're trying to give us well, the same thing that Jesus did with parables. So mm -hmm. it's not just giving it out, you know, giving the information. Well, a lot of the information was secret, hidden knowledge anyway. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. So I don't know. You tell me. Okay. So today we, we kind of... We have tape recorders, we have solid state drives, we can save stuff, and we can go back and refer to it. We have the right. internet. Mm -hmm. Back then, before paper is invented, you had language and yeah. math, but nothing really to write on and to transfer from one place to another. So how do you get someone to remember something is through a great... Like the movies today. Like mm -hmm. you, story. If you went to the movies they and saw this story. boring movie, yeah... You're not gonna really remember it, so right. they're like, "Man, we can make these people remember it by telling a very profound, profound provocative story." Story, right? The people remember stories, right? So that's what my book is—the greatest story mm -hmm. ever stolen. So we told stories. So an allegory is not like a false story. A myth doesn't mean something is not real. It's a fable that um, that a culture stands behind. That they they pushed that they wanted their children to remember to to continue wisdom to be passed on to the next generation to the next generation, so that's why they told allegories and fables. Mm -hmm. They had hidden meanings behind them, mm -hmm. and that's how they kept it going. And that was a genius way of doing it mm -hmm. to get people to remember stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, these were true concepts. These were, you know, they say it's kind of profound, but it's really not. That's that's the way that they, they're thinking of their intelligence. Mm -hmm. So they really were able to create these allegories, but in, they, in that time in history, that was their reality. Mm -hmm. So, you know, technology of change, you know, our, our understanding of change, a lot of the old technology is no longer with us. So that was their technology, mm -hmm. which today is this is our new technology. You right. know, um, but anyhow, that's well, because that's, the oral tradition was the it was the way information was passed. But down. remember, uh, this information was left behind millions of years ago, and it's still here today. Mm -hmm. So, they did a great job. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree. So they wrote. They eventually created technology. So, what I learned this week is that this is a this is a guy who's a he studies metal netter, and he says. His name is Hujaru, who lives out in Conyers here in Georgia. And he said that language stemmed from math. That mm -hmm. first, yeah. we created the technology of math to help us tr trade stuff. Like, say I had two apples, and I had to give you one, mm -hmm. and you one. And just to make sure you got your one, your mm -hmm. one, that's where math was done, the, the, the test that you got your one, so it was no, no fighting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So math was first done. They may have 
put some well, straws I mean, it's a on perspective. the ground. We don't know, but you know that means this, people this have is what, this perspective. This from his what research. He, yeah, and this is what he said. I I, I agree because math is to me is more rudimentary. I mean, it's, language is more complex than math in a way. Right, but the math, like if you look at some of the the the, the Jewish and the Kabbalah stuff, and I'm sure they got it from Egypt too. Um, the the math represents sound, right? And so like each letter has a um, a particular sound, but it's also mathematics. I mean, it's also a, a number. Mm -hmm. and so the number corresponds well, to universal everything, energy. Energy. Everything on the planet's math. Everything's right. planet math. Everything. everything. So to who T represents math. Everything. Right. Everything. Right. Everything. To who T represents math. So that that lets you know that math existed before the spirit in the spirit realm before. So that's that's the what what to me as I understand is that there's a there's an order, a mathematical order yeah. of existence um, that exists behind the physical right. realm. Is mm -hmm. all right. Okay, so I said all which is that, the, which is a vibration. So each 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 um, number has a particular vibration, mm -hmm. a sound vibration, and mm -hmm. that, that's how they say the universe is created. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, to sound, keep it simple. Yeah. Keep it simple because uh, we uh, yeah. society today has created this method, but you have your alphabet, and every letter in the alphabet has a number beside it. Right. And you, if you know those, number. Right, right? If you know that letter position, which is the numeric number, that's how you can write a word in numbers. Let's right. keep it simple. Right. And so mm -hmm. the math was used to. That's how they coded a lot of the right secret well, knowledge. Well, they didn't want people to know. Right. Everything's in numbers. Right. And it's it's a science. It's part of science. And it's a way to know something, mm -hmm. right? Language is more a way of communicating. You can use ask a question to know, right? Mm -hmm. But to induce, to find the unknown of something, usually it's an equation to find the known. Mm -hmm. So math was used in astronomy to measure the stars, to mm -hmm. do a whole bunch of stuff that right. I, I can't conceive. Right, exactly. But they knew the earth was round. Right. They knew that a year was 365 and a quarter days. They knew the four seasons. All this came from the Kushites. Right. And from the four seasons, you get the four elements, which are? Earth, wind, fire, and water. Correct. <laughs> so those four, I, I, my, my hypothesis is that when the Black Panther does this, or when you see the Egyptians do this, mm -hmm. that represents Earth, wind, fire, and water. These okay. four. Because of four. One, two, three, four. three, and four. Well, that's what that the, that people don't even realize that's what the cross represents. You know, the four quarters. Yeah, right. You know, okay. the four so I didn't want to get that deviant. Yeah, but it's, right. It's, so it's, it's tying stuff same. in, yeah. what you see. But it, it's good because people do things being totally unaware yeah, where mm -hmm. it comes from. of the symbol, mm -hmm. yeah, meaning means, yeah. that they're representing themselves to another. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, we, we catch things subconsciously, but we don't always have a conscious understanding of why we're doing it. Well, what's interesting, so. what's really interesting is that a lot of what we do today, our ancestors did thousands of years ago, we just lost the meaning behind it. Right. Right. So right. we And so, and then when the religion became organized in ways to become the tools of manipulation, then they took that secret information and knowledge and and, and gave it to us in ways that, you know, just in, 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 on a surface level. Well, but they understood, but a lot of the people who were involved in the invention of mm -hmm. religion understand the secret knowledge behind it. Mm -hmm. And so what happened for a lot of us, a lot of it was, you know, I was just reading today how many books were burned in China, Liberia, yeah. Alexander, mm -hmm. down in Mexico, I mean, um, on the Inca people. Mm -hmm. So when the conquerors came in, they wanted to burn, they, they, right. they pulled what they could from the, from the knowledge, the hidden, because a lot of knowledge... To create their own new system. To, right, to create right. systems of, of to control. Developing new systems of control. Right. Exactly. So, we, so um, we know that that's happened all over, all over the world. But in a lot of the stuff, but unfortunately, a lot of the knowledge was lost, too, because they right. did burn, you know, you burn 2,000 books or 5,000 books, entire libraries. And one of the things I also learned was they took, when they buried Alexander, mm -hmm. they took a lot of the books and stuff that, because he wanted to be, you know, becoming a world empire, mm -hmm. right? So when he, in, in fact, he, um, it's interesting to hear his story because what happened when his father, when, when he encountered the Egyptians, <laughs> anybody encountered Egyptians, like I said, they're going to get turned out. You got turned out. You got transformed. <laughs> you get, 
He's going to get he turned says, out. I'd rather be like them. Yeah, that, right. and he, he said, forget he said, my father. Forget my bloodline. not Philip. My father Forget is, my blood. I'm on, I'm I want to be this. Right. And so he was like, he wanted to become a world power. Mm. You don't want nobody else. You don't want to share the power because you want the power. Right. right. So right. they said even when they buried him, they took a whole bunch of stuff and put it in his tomb. Got rid right. of it. Right. So, hey, hey, y'all, check it out. Y'all didn't know that I was doing the great war dashiki when he was finished. Anyhow. Oh, leave, okay. Okay. But yeah, he 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 became African. He, he wore dashiki. Anyhow, no, I'm gonna tell you, Napoleon. Oh, Napoleon. No, 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 no. no, no, no Alexander, the, Alexander, no, Alexander, Alexander Alexander's degree. He 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 wore dashiki. Napoleon actually put on uh, a Muslim, but he became he 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 uh, converted. Mm. At least probably just to manipulate the information and everything. But they, they said he had the whole put the whole. Mm, you, the, 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 you, go, uh, man, you go to Egypt, uh, man. He got turned out. All that great information. It was right, like right, wow. Right, right. So anyway, yeah, that's, 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 that's what Yeah, <laughs> no, that's that's true. Yeah. Um, what you're saying actually mm -hmm. happened. The Ptolemies who were given uh, Egypt from Alexander. Mm -hmm. What you'll see is they. Um, they came into Egypt and they conquered it, but they embraced what the Egypt culture. Right. right. If if the Greeks were so great, they they gave up their Greek culture and embraced the African culture. Yeah, That's they right. did. So they, they did. They, That's right. Even though they conquered it, That's isn't, right. That, right. isn't that amazing? That's like it was so great what they conquered. They like threw their culture away and took <laughs> on mm -hmm. the people they conquered. Right. People mm -hmm. don't even realize like. Um, What's the, what's the um, Serapis? Mm -hmm. People don't even realize that was a derivative of Osiris and Apis. And they took uh, Alexander, well, it was, there's two stories, but one of them is, um, and he took a, a, a Greek god and put him in Egypt, right? And he, a Greek bearded god, and mm -hmm. people don't even realize that's the Jesus. Mm -hmm. so we're not going to go down that right now, but that's the Jesus that... That's how Jesus became white. Hey Amen. That's what I'm saying. That's right. Because yeah, he got to transform. Jesus is really Serapis. I know. But I just right, want to so, say, listen, y'all. Or even that image of him anyway. That's right. I just want to say, right. listen. We're, we're universal consciousness, but we're, we're literally dropping knowledge. So I hope you're catching this. <laughs> that's why but, it's but called universal consciousness. But at some point, I want to go back and tweak all this because we really want to go at right. it piece by piece. I know. Well, yeah, I didn't want to get Because we kind of all over this stuff. When you touch Jesus, then you're hitting people's nerves. That's why I wanted to... Yeah, we don't deal with that. We're I want to glide whole... into that, yeah, mm -hmm. but, so they can but, better understand what's going on. But yeah. remember, it begins with information, so we can stir up your consciousness. Again, so continue following us, universal consciousness. But I, I'm I'm gonna keep this thing moving. So let's keep it going. Okay. Okay. So in the in the creation story, basically it um, encompasses is those four major elements. They they call it the four pillars of the universe which is the water, earth, air, and fire. These are the forces of, the greatest forces of nature. So when you see lightning, that's part of fire. When you see an earthquake, that's earth. When you see a tornado or um, a hurricane, that's water, mm -hmm. you know. So they saw these things that we experience today and they put it in those four elements. And those four elements encompasses the whole entire universe. That's how they saw it. Those are the four pillars of the universe. Mm -hmm. So for example, you say, oh, there's no water in other planets. Okay, so what they see on Mars, they, they're thinking they're finding water. All the elements we have in our bodies, that the carbon that comes out of our mouth mm -hmm. are the same elements that are throughout the entire universe. There's no yeah. different. Mm -hmm. Like for example, the, the planet Venus is the whole atmosphere is carbon. Okay, so what you see up in heaven, those stars, you're looking at yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you, when you burn meat, that char that you smell is the carbon. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let, let's go back to the four elements. So the four pillars are, we're going to talk about why, what's the meaning behind those four elements. And it's astronomical. Okay. So, but we're going to put that into the creation story. So, from atom, this is this in the spirit. Atom, as a symbolic uh, netter, is he creates. He's a he's a male netter, God, and he creates. He expands from himself. Right. There's no other but him, and he doesn't know anything. He doesn't even know himself. So 
he, there's an energy that, uh, and I use the word energy, but there's no word for that, that energy in Egypt. But what they just said is that from himself, and he, he, he did a sexual act, which masturbation, because we're going to get into the phallics later, um, that from that he expanded. And everywhere he expanded, he says, I am that. Right. Okay. So that is saying that everything is atom. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then atom is synonymous of Ra, the sun, which is spirit. Okay. So from spirit, he had nowhere to stand as was, was mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. then came. So as spirit, spirit represented air, because you can't see air, but you know it's there. Right. Okay. So from air, where you had need somewhere to land, where do you think the next element comes into play? What's Water, that? Moisture. Which is earth. Or, well. Well, moisture they, is next. Right, because they create a shoe and tech and tech right. and tech right, with moisture and air. Right. Right. So from air, thanks for correcting me. Mm -hmm. From air, you have moisture. So let's say when you speak, they say the first word of atom was who. Mm -hmm. So H U, who is a netter? Who was a very important old netter and is an air god? And who is oneself? Who is your spiritual? The spiritual part of your physical being. Everything has spirit. Everything is who. Okay. Like who are you? Yes you are. You get what I just said? <laughs> mm -hmm. You get it? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you are who? Somebody asks who are you? Just say I am who. So when you, you are human. You are who? In the physical realm, you are a God. You are God that always existed. From who you have his counterpart, which is Tefna, which is moisture. So as you speak, the first word was who, that frequency, which everything came forth. Um, as you speak, that moisture from your mouth has water in it. In it. Okay, air is made of oxygen. And I forgot and the other element, Nitrogen. but it's part water. H two O. Yes, the air. If you took the water out of the air, we would probably I don't know what would happen to us. But we right. need that air is made up of water. Right. So H two O so, is water. So they noticed that. <laughs> okay. They noticed that the, in the study in nature, right. air and water were the most powerful forces, more p powerful than the next two elements that I mentioned. So the next element where Ra needed somewhere to stand, so Earth was created, which is Earth, the next element. And that was called the primordial mound. And Earth was, was the, the netter for Earth was Pata, the creator. So in that, it's saying that Atom is, is creating, and he's creating the fit from non-matter into yeah. matter. Right. And then from the last element, you have fire. And I, I symbolize fire um, as life, what you experience in life, because you're, be, you're being tested. Well, life, they, they say fire is spirit, though. So fire should have been that first one, I think. Right? Yeah, fire is, um, spirit is all existence. Right, spirit right. Is, mm -hmm. is in everything. So we mentioned the three mm -hmm. elements. Air is first, because they say air, air is the um, is shoe, um, is spirit. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you this okay, on the zodiac, and where everything comes from the spirit earth. realm. Mm -hmm. Then moisture is next, because they the symbolize oh, the spirit the realm head, as head, head, head. a watery abyss. Head, head, head. Okay, right. the cosmos is water. They saw it as water. Ra mm -hmm. rides in a boat. Because he's riding in the cosmos. Right. Okay. He's, he's the sun riding on water. Okay. So, but, but so he's the, walking on water. See how Jesus walks on water? We'll mm -hmm. get into that. 
Go ahead. But so I'm just trying to because I know you know when you look at the origins of the universe, I think fire comes first. But they say so you have Ra. I mean, um, um, I mean, uh, uh, was it Amen? Yeah, because Amen is, yeah. the, is the void. Noon, uh, to, noon, 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 noon is, is the, the void. void. Right, right. Noon is the void. So he kind of impregnated the void, basically. Yeah. So right, from so, noon, everything comes from noon. Right. So, but then you have two, okay, so you have two, uh, Shu and Tefnu, and then you have heaven and earth. So that's how they kind of, in, in terms of the, how things, so you had Shu and Tefnu was moisture and air, then heaven and earth, Geb and, Geb. and uh, who was heaven? Newt. Newt, right, that's that's kind of, so you just have, I think uh, significant to point out is that they just had different cosmologies. This is my understanding, right, that you had like the different uh, names of the God, uh, because before they unified uh, and, and then Ra, um, and Ra became supreme or Ra became supreme, you had these different um, sort of, I'm just going to say tribal groups, so to speak, I'll call it tribe. They never, people never refer to Egyptians as tribes, but so you had different groups that had their own God. And so from my understanding from the reading of Buzz is that they began to put together when they had, had the different gnomes, when they had the, the Amen, Ra, the right, reign supreme, what they tried to do was take those two and they put those two together from two different groups, mm -hmm. um, and then, um, and then what they when they um, developed their whole theology, they tried to include all the different peoples, uh, who, who they referred to as the primary creator God. So, um, anyway, but you know, not to knock you off, but in terms of the the order of how things were, uh, how the universe originated in terms of the elements. This is what you know. They, they say it was heaven, you know, Shu and Tefnu, and then Gab and I mean, um, heaven and earth. But there's different cosmologies with that. So I was just making that point. It doesn't necessarily mean that it came in that order in all of them. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. So Af Africa does has probably thousands. Even back then, mm -hmm. there were not just one creation story. Right. So I picked the the main ones that I found. Right. Because um, I mentioned, I think, seven trinities mm. or triads in the mm. book. Okay. Each of those triads is a creation story. Right. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so. But at some point, one of the reasons why we still hear the one of the, the Enad, 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 Enad 9 mm -hmm. is because that one kind of overrode all the rest of them at some point. Somehow the, the priest, when they started to, when Egypt, when um Southern and Northern Egypt, uh, Egypt um, unified. Mm -hmm. Then one of them began to, to rise up over the rest of them. So you had a moon that was from Heliopolis, and I think um, Ra Ra was Heliopolis, and then you had a moon, a moon from one of the other ones. From so, Om, from where? From the city of Om. Uh, yeah, Anu in the city was it Anu. Um, no, Anu and Heliopolis were one and the same, I think. Mm -hmm. What was it called? Uh, Heliopolis is a moon. Okay. So. What what the period you're speaking of mm -hmm. is um, what so we're speaking of Egypt, mm -hmm. okay? So before we get into Egypt, we, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak of there. Just write that down. Let's okay. speak of that. Yeah. So I was speaking of the creation story, mm -hmm. and another a part of creation story you have the Ogdod, the Ogdod. Okay. The Ogdod I speak of in the book when I speak of the Unk, mm -hmm. and um. One of my references is saying that the Unk is an acronym for the eight gods. These are these gods were the first gods right. before any other god, and that's right. the, that's where the when I, I give the names of those when mm -hmm. I'm describing the Unk. So that's okay. another creation story, right. and that's dealing with water, the flood, and you see that's um, some of the odd dogs are on the walls here. That frog head, mm -hmm. he's one of that too. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, so you know, because we know there's so many different stories, yeah, and so I, I don't think it's so it, it, it's it's not necessarily significant in terms of the order of things, but as much as it is just, just fi primarily what the stories were conveying, mm -hmm. generally speaking. Yeah, so what they were conveying is like because people have to me, they had that same question who am I? Where did I come from? Like, how did it all come to be? And that's these are the stories that were. Um, Correct. These were allegory. Allegory. They were not taken liter literally. That's why this is not a literal being behind me. He's a allegorical symbol representing something. Okay. Um, so 
So they told the people anyway. So that the people <laughs> understood as an allegory. That's how they told stories. Right. Just through allegory. All right. So what happened, I can tell you when literal, literary stories came into being mm -hmm. uh, in, in the religion section. I think I, I speak of that. No, but I'm saying like, so you have... You have the stories, the allegories, because mm -hmm. you're giving people examples in terms of how to live. Mm -hmm. Then there's the hidden knowledge that they don't tell the people. Mm -hmm. So we, well, we, I won't go down that road, right? but I just wanted to yeah. say, yeah, because it's allegories in terms of telling us how to live. Yeah, there, right. was, there was nothing hidden being that what was popular in Africa with wisdom, mm -hmm. they call it proverbs or parables. It is good. It was good to say a, a parable or a, 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 a proverb right. without telling you the answer. Right. So when it's an allegory story, yeah. mm -hmm. um, there's a there's a hidden meaning, but they would they wouldn't tell you right. the, the meaning because they wanted you, you to, to figure it out for yourself. They, well, they wanted you to search. Right, search. Mm -hmm. Right. And they probably would never have you go your whole lifetime and you still don't know because they see you searching. Right. They'll have someone as a person because you there'll be a person that takes you in saying this this person's one to learn mm -hmm. and they will tell you, okay, come in here and you you'll become under my teachings and they would know. Right. But it was never it's never to me it's not that where it's so secret that you know you can't know it. Yeah, it's not so secret you can't know, but you have to be initiated into it. Yeah, I mean. Right. So there's knowledge that people have to be initiated had in, into yeah. it, right? So you had you had rites of passages. Yeah. That's just that's just a, a rebirth from childhood to adulthood. Mm -hmm. But then you also had priesthoods, Correct. right? And people who were diviners, mm -hmm. and people who had access to to knowledge in realms that most people don't know. So that's why they always went to these people, diviners and priests, and so because these are the people who focused your energy and times on studying these phenomena. Mm -hmm. And so you have that knowledge. You couldn't just get that knowledge without being initiated into some, to that knowledge. And so, so you might tell allegorical stories so people can use it in their everyday life, but there was also other information, knowledge that everybody didn't have access to. Right. And that's the word, that my, but I keep saying, as I said before, that's the mouth to ear kind of knowledge. Mm -hmm. right? well, well, those are called initiates when right. you go into that type of realm and that type of study right um no that study wasn't available to everybody right. but the dedicated searcher or seeker which is what you, you said will find it you will find it and right. they will find you right right yeah. so so you both said the exact same, same thing, thing right and just in different ways because mm -hmm. the seeker of a level of technology is a very rare individual right so um if the, if it's in that rare category mm -hmm. then by all means yeah that person it's a secret right and they'll be initiated into it because you would have done all the things necessary right to be noticed to, or to be invited in right and see that so. other thing is like they said you know the whole saying when the student is ready the teacher will appear that's right because that's you had to have be, have a fertile you had to be, your mind and your spirit had to be fertile for it that's the first thing mm -hmm. second of all you had to want it and not and, and want it and once you like you said if you once you start going down certain paths and you start seeking it it's just going to come to you because and it, just by the law of attraction, it's just going. The knowledge is going to start just falling and dropping into your to your hand. But in generally, you know, all across Africa and all over the world, uh, there were like you said, the shamans. You had people who had access to realms that everyday people didn't have access to because they wasn't seeking it, you know, or they weren't initiated into it. And so I'm just, you know, I'm just saying that again to say, you know, in terms of some of the knowledge being allegorical, to teach people lessons as they go through life. And then some of the knowledge being um, that everybody didn't have access to. And and there there are there are more ways to look at this because mm -hmm. some are seekers, and then you have those that are selected. Okay. So you have some that are selected from birth and then prepared with the necessary information to be able to convert into that society. Right. You know, and then you have, then the you have some who say there's some have to who do the research to get into that society. Right. So Right. And then you have some who were pre selected before they even came to planet. That, so that's, that's a whole that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, so those are whole other things right. conversation right. that we want to have. But so it still stays right. in the two. Some are selected. Right. And some work their way into it. Right. Mm hmm So anyhow. So in in my book, 
because in my journey, you know, as you as you come across stuff like, and then you 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 eventually like put stuff together like, wow. So one of the things that I found in my journey is called the triad. Mm -hmm. This is the Trinity, which is in Christianity you have Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit. Right. Okay, and that was really confusing to me when I was going to church. Mm -hmm. But then I understood that in Egypt or in Cush, they had triads, they had trinities. That right. this this was something that occurred before Christianity. Right. And we spoke of the first triad already, which was Atom, Shu, and Tefnut. And that I from looking at the triad, it seems that there is a two parents and an offspring. Yeah, that's that is that's the that is the one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I found seven triads in when in the Christian Trinity is one of the seven. Mm -hmm. So in my book, I don't explicitly say it, but this little section here, when I'm speaking of the Trinity, is the first glimpse to the reader that these religions got some of their concepts from something prior. Oh, definitely. Okay. We know that. All right. So <laughs> that triad is spirit and moisture. So that's the spirit realm. So atom is in the spiritual realm. That's the first triad. Um, and out in the in the tr the spirit realm, on on when I speak of the zodiac, I'm gonna speak of that later. Is your water and air, and the physical realm is your earth and fire. And what I notice is that on the opposite of that, you have. On the opposite of Earth, you have what? I don't know. Too so much. we're using the four elements. If we, we have Earth, they're, water, they're fire. They're opposites of each other. Yeah. So what puts out fire? Water. Right. So on, on the zodiac, mm -hmm. on the actual zodiac, water is the opposite of fire. Okay. So water is in the spirit realm. It puts out the physical realm. Oh, that's it conquers the physical realm. That is a perspective. That's a, that's what I saw. Right. So another thing, Geb is, is Earth, physical matter. Right. What's the opposite of Earth? What's the last element we didn't mention? Fire? Air. air? I mean, air. I thought air was the first one. So air fire. is the opposite of, of Earth, and it puts, air puts out Earth. So when you, when you have a dust on the ground, you can use a blower to blow the Earth away. Mm -hmm. Wind blows Earth. So Air conquers Earth. Okay. <laughs> it does. It does. I, mean, it I does. can't think of fire it, cannot conquer water. Tell me an instant where it can. And Earth can never conquer air. Okay. This is me watching. This is from my whole experience. Like you watch, mm -hmm. there's a cartoon, if there are any kids watching, called The Last Airbender. And I, I'm assuming they use the airbender, who's the main hero. Mm -hmm. He's the hero of air. Because mm -hmm. he's the one that conquers the fire guy at the end. Okay. And he conquers all. He's the most powerful because air is spirit. Mm -hmm. He's the controller. So this, this is what I he's, just he's got a, from He's the commander or controller of air. Yeah, air is, is shifting. It's, it's, you right. can't he's, see it. Right. And it's the most powerful out of all mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's... I just happened to see that mm -hmm. when I was doing this. So I mentioned, I mentioned other trinities. The most popular trinity, even more popular than the Christian trinity today, was called the Assyrian trinity. Mm -hmm. It was Asar, Aset, and mm -hmm. Haru. Right. This lasted for thousands of years, the longest lasting trinity. Well, they believe, I mean, you know, they, they know that, that Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is the Trinity, the, is the Osirian Trinity. Okay. I mean, I mean, that's, you know, we know that that's where they got the Trinity from. Okay. All right, so. The, the problem is, is that they took the mother out. See, that's the thing, so not, and, and it's, you know, we can, you know, it's, um, that can be challenged, but, so you have 
the mother, father, ch mother, father, child. That's that's the that's the holy trinity right there. Because if we're holy, and we all come from God, then that's the holy trinity. Mm -hmm. It's just what happened is they just made the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. But they pretty much and the Holy Spirit, if we really look at it, really is the mother. But you know they took it out and said so. Basically, they kind of just took the, the female out of it and just made the father, son, and the Holy Spirit. But but in the, in the if we are we speaking mm -hmm. of the Bible. Yeah, I'm talking about the Bible. That's so where the, you, that's where the you, Trinity comes from. If you read the Bible, because mm -hmm. I thought that too, right? Whenever they mention Holy Spirit, they mm -hmm. call it a she. Okay, well then it's the same thing then. Yeah. Since the female is still there, and I, I agree with so that. So why would they not? Why would they just not call it that? No, I I, I yeah. agree that it's an allegory mm -hmm. because the mother, the the she in in the, on the zodiac, a set. Which is Isis mm -hmm. is the mother, is the mother's spirit. It's the she. She's the mother. Mm -hmm. So um, she's she's considered um, a bull, a female bull, which same same as Pata is a bull. He's represented as a bull. All the pharaohs in Egypt were considered bulls. But well, Osiris was the bull. Yeah, the apis, all, apis represent Osiris. Right, all, right. all of them considered the bull. Right, or or sar. Why right. do you why do you think it's a, the it's bull? It's the it's the power of the bull. It's it's it's, it's, it's the force and the power of the bull. So he's the king. Mm -hmm. Then he has this. Uh, 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 an, it, what, what, what you said it's the force and the power. Power of, you the, know, of the king. Of, right. Right. right, right. And you went to Africa, mm -hmm. in in the different tribes in Africa, their wealth, even in ancient times, mm -hmm. were. Is tied to the bull, like they got mostly their milk, their clothes. Well, the cow. The bull. People don't even realize the reason why the cow is so sacred, is because she feeds everybody. She mm -hmm. feeds the universe, and that's why. Uh, the, but Neef is the oldest god, and she was represented as the cow, and so the, that's the energetic force of the of the of the nurturer who feeds the feeds the planet, you know. And so, um, and from my understanding, that's the oldest god that they know in Egypt. So, so from of course naturally from the cow you have you know that's what say, part of the same family mm -hmm. is the uh, the bull. So, right. Um, so it, it was a female bull, mm -hmm. and I, in the book I call it ox, O X. And if mm -hmm. you notice, this is another thing that I something a hypothesis that when you take the letters O and X. You mm -hmm. get the zodiac. You get a circle with mm -hmm. the horizontal, vertical mm -hmm. signs. So that O and X is the bull. This is something I can't okay. came up with. So they, the bull, the the Maasai tribe, who is a Bantu tribe, which the Egyptians were Bantu. Mm -hmm. Their their spirituality is that God gave them a bull um, from heaven. As as the nurturer to help to bring them life and sustenance, mm -hmm. and so the bull was like the key animal to the Bantu nation. This mm -hmm. is the Kushites and the Egyptians, and even to the Maasai today, mm -hmm. in many cultures in Africa, um, um, the bull uh, represented, like you said, strength. power, strength, strength. Um, mm -hmm. and where things are birthed from. Mm. So the sun is birth. Um, the bull also, rep, Bata represents the bull, Ta, mm -hmm. T-A-U. And you see, get the, the word Taurus, right. which is a bull okay. sign. Mm -hmm. Okay. So ta, Bata and Ta represents the primordial mound. So mm -hmm. that's the first mound that Ra stood on. Mm was a bull mm. well, well that's symbolized the bull so that so the pharaoh represents um coming in, into the physical realm mm. as the bull mm. as Ra okay. into the physical realm all right and they, they will wear this tail um you probably can see it i can show you on there see the little tails hanging from the back of some of the Haru and Tahuti on there that's the tail of a bull mm. All right, so so the Trinity, um, there's a Trinity story where Geb, which is the father of Aset, mm -hmm. 
gives um, the two lands, the two lands of Egypt, which is upper and lower Kemet, mm -hmm. um, were basically representing the universe and where you have as above, so below. Right. As within, so without. So one land was given to Asar and one to Satek, his brother. And then later they saw the fighting. He saw the fighting in between the two. So then he gave one part of the land to Haru and then one remained with Satek. Satek represents your ego. Right. Your your animalistic nature. And he also represents the in nature desert. Right. Um, being without thirst, you know, water. Right. Lack. Lack of and yeah. um you notice in um in the creation story or in the coming forth by day we mentioned later, Satek is never mentioned. So because we're to to aspire to be Haru, who conquers Satek. The oh, but the, but the ultimate aspiration is to be Osar. I'm you thinking. are Osar. Mm -hmm. You're always Osar, which is your um, your spiritual God being okay. is Osar. But, but you have to overcome her rule. You transform you to to be. on a daily, minute basis, mm -hmm. hourly, however frequency. Yeah, it's a lot of work <laughs> to become the new Osar, which right. is his son Haru. Mm, okay. So Haru is a Sar, just like in the Lion King Simba, he, uh, Zakifi or the little baboon leads him. He said the baboon is the Simba you know? says, "My father's dead," and then mm -hmm. um, Graffiti, Graffiti, I think it's the baboon, knocks him with the, mm -hmm. with the staff and said, "Your father's not dead." And he leads him right out, and he said, "Look up," and. His father tells him, "I am, <coughs> I am your son. Look, look in the, mm -hmm. you know, I am you. Right. Mm -hmm. Look so in the I, reflection. Look in the reflection. Right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's interesting how they even those stories. They, we know those are African stories right. because the baboon is Tahuti. Yes. And uh, and, and, and you know, he the speaks wisdom to teach him right. and, and all that. So it's, the, yeah. it's amazing how these symbols are shown in a lot of the um, popular culture, but a lot of us don't." Realize that this realize. stuff has been on for a long time. Mm -hmm. These stories have been told for a long time, but now it's just become commercial. A lot of people right. are making a whole lot of money off of them. Yeah, that's okay. true. Yeah. We can uh, we can go on with this for hours and hours and hours on it because it is extremely interesting. Um, that's what we call it: consciousness uh, through information, and um, universal we can, consciousness. I know. That's no, no, no. I, I know, but say <laughs> it's, like know, it's called it's, universal consciousness, right? Where we, of course, promote love, light, and consciousness through information. And um, that's what we're at with this. And um, you guys want to keep it going? Or want, want, okay, want to put about uh, 15 more minutes in this? Or something? Um, okay, we'll put about 15 more minutes in this. Uh, I, I hope that we don't uh, um, miss, I hope you don't miss your dinner. <laughs> but anyhow, listen, let's keep it coming. Like, it's great information, so keep it coming. Okay. So... Uh, any questions? Or will we continue? Or any continue, questions? continue. Or continue. Uh. All right. So one um, can when they look at the eye of Haru, um, that is that they call it Wajet. Um, it's, it looks like an eye, and um, some people may say it's the third eye, stuff like that. It's never mentioned called the third eye. Um, that is coming to, into awareness. That's yeah. what that represents, the wajet. And it just also means, like awareness also means consciousness. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and there's different ways we can look at that, but to, to the way I kind of see the consciousness is that you're, when you, you know, you can look at it from your third eye, but you look at it as you're looking through the world and you're approaching life through consciousness. Mm -hmm. And once you approach life through consciousness, that means that you see your connection to everything and how unified you are with everything. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we had this conversation a few days ago about consciousness and awareness. Mm -hmm. And they are, they are one of the same, but not really. Awareness is one thing, but consciousness is a broader perspective. Well, consciousness too, like, for example, the, the epiphany I had recently, right? Mm -hmm. It's meaning that what you do is you suppress your 
physical senses. I mean, your, your senses. So it means if I close my eyes, my ears, my, no, you know, my feelings and all those, and I approach life through my consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. Then how does that, you know, how, then what would happen if I was to see myself or, or, or connected everything with all my other senses suppressed? How would I approach life, you know, approach okay. life? Well, when you when you go into meditation and you try to open up that conscious realm, which is the part of the brain that really you have to understand, in order to get to that place, you have to be in silence. Silence right. of all the chatter, silence of your thoughts, silence of all the things that you think that you should be doing, silence of thought, period. Okay? And so what that does is it allows you to open up to different senses. Right. Senses that your reaches... Sense. Through, consciousness. through consciousness, right. through the antennas and the frequencies spirit. of spirit consciousness, right. spirit awareness, and allow other other possibilities right. reach into your possibility of whatever it is. That's the unseen. That's the unseen, what, right. whatever that might be. Right. So, so I mean, so and it's amazing as you go through this, you constant, you know, because it's, as you continue to seek, then your level of consciousness continues to awaken. Mm -hmm. Right, and so you have these epiphanies, and you're like, "Oh, okay." Well, remember, okay. the more work you do, is compounded on the work you've done. Right. So, how can you be anything except brighter, bigger, better, more conscious, right. more aware? But the, I can't. I I can't put out. At some point, we'll come back to it because I can't articulate what I'm saying right now. It's, I mean, I'm trying to articulate. I think you're doing a great job, but I guess if you're going somewhere, I'm not. Aware. <laughs> I'm not conscious in terms of, of that. in terms of like suppressing all your physical. Because that's what that's well, that's what the state they, you want. Well, well, they say strip yourself of, of of worldly desires. No, no, just listen for me for a minute, right? So, say you close down all your all your physical uh, uh, senses because okay. it's like it's shutting down the this, this this sense body. Okay. So if you shut down the sense body, mm -hmm. then there's a certain level. Then we're talking about being in contact with that level of yourself, right? But but mm -hmm. you're no longer experiencing the sense body. You're experiencing your consciousness body. Right, because there, you know, now we're getting into a space to things. where. Okay, we let him go. Okay. To no, no, you're going to another space to where. Yes, you're saying now you want to talk to the driver. Exactly. Basically, that's what it is. Okay, okay. Um, but people don't understand what that means. But just you know, t take it, you know, because I I did it. I came downstairs. I closed my eyes. Yeah, you right. want to talk to the driver. Right. Because you have all the body memory of thoughts of control because that's what's been inputted. Right. But that's not the driver. Right. And so that's you, what we want to do. We want to get back that's, to the that's driver. The, that's another story. You right. want to get so back to the driver. Conversations and the driver is a mid between other realms. But that's right. another story. You're right. So we were talking about that. Let him get to give it to Kimmy. <laughs> Kimmy was doing all this too. You know they was. But. Well, the, what they were aware of the driver. There wasn't all the stuff in the middle that like, we have yeah, that, we're the faced, that, we're, that we're faced with today. Right. So basically, I think the eye means seeing it through your consciousness. Well, you know what? You'd be surprised that you can see through that eye when you're walking with your eyes closed. I see, you can, right, that's what I'm saying. I, right, I don't, right. you know. I, so you see through the eye, I've seen through the consciousness. Well, that, it all it's the same thing. the third eye, uh, okay, third gotcha. eye, uh, okay. all the, no, you, you see, know, I don't see. Well, I can, I can close my eyes and see you all very clearly. Right, so I, I don't see, so I don't see. You can see, I don't see. So mm -hmm. what I'm saying is, though, but I'm seeing not in the way you're seeing Right. Well, you know, and that's all right. We're going, going around in a circle. But okay. I, I love the book. <laughs> I, I think that uh, the world needs to know more about the book. Right. Um, because there's a lot of work that went into <laughs> the untold story. Okay. So let's um, get so yeah. yeah. So um, this last part of the I, because um, basically it took a lot of deep research to find out what that eye is, the eye of Harut. It's basically, uh, I can't show a picture of it right now, but it's, it looks like an eye. Whenever you see an eye in Egypt by itself, that's the eye of Haru. And it stands for sacrifice, healing, restoration, and protection. And Haru gave it to his father to protect him in the, in the spiritual realm. Um, so it's for restoration and protection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I want you to say that one more time because if we can look at life that way to our brother man, um, it may make a difference. So let's let's say that one more time. So the eye of Haru is the the sun. Haru 
gave his eye to his father to protect him and to restore him in the in the spiritual realm okay so that's what the eye is called the wajet mm -hmm. so as a person one is transforming oneself to re to restore to rebalance and to protect mm -hmm. it's those it's all these qualities and these all these positive qualities that's as as you and you can do that hopefully through non words sometimes best not to say anything or through words before action mm -hmm. and as and, and before the word is the thought is um, you have thought they call it the seer before you speak it right okay so that's wisdom so I'm a, in that last few minutes, I was going to speak of my yacht, but I want to get back to where it. it appears that our purpose here in life was to, to understand who we are. We come here as babies, and we grow, and we're taught by our elders. And it's to, it's to follow my yacht. We'll get into what following my yacht means. But it's to live in balance, mm -hmm. to 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 respect nature, others, justice, to re, to teach, to protect, mm -hmm. and um, pass it on, reciprocity, mm -hmm. and to get back to what that question this lady had for me he said, "What's I got to do with paying the bills? If everything is divine and we're God, and you want it the best for someone." Would you charge someone for water or for a house or for a car? If these things are used to help someone to live by, would you charge someone for these things? Would you have somebody owe you something? <laughs> does the sun charge you for all that it does? Does a tree charge you for shade? Does water from the sky charge you for what it provides? You know, we as humans, have we, have we leveled up to use money to cause inequalities in our lives, to cause us to not be who what we truly are to be? That's, that's, one of the hidden reasons why I wrote the book, to let you know that you are God, but not saying you're a God, but how does a God act? Well, that's a, I think that's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, people don't always understand the word reciprocity. So right, that, it's right, it's, it's reciprocity. I know, right. I might tongue twist, but anyhow. No, I'm, I'm um, just agreeing with you. Right, and uh, you'd be surprised how when you really are uh, more concerned about the welfare of your brother when your brother is down how it comes back mm -hmm. without me charging him for my actions the universe gives me back right you know mm -hmm. but again that is a practice a way of being because it just doesn't fall out the sky the first time you say i wipe the debt clear because it really truly is not a debt you know so if you ever think of life as a debt um, you're right, you'll never be seen through the universe or seeing the universe when the universe gives you, gives it back because you'll, you'll miss it. And so, um, listen, we can go on all day, but I'm just going to say that, listen, I love what you we do. This is, this is universal consciousness. And we have our brother, Aki Tolliver, who has a great book. It's on Amazon. It's up right now on the screen. So uh, if you want to hear more uh, and get uh, re refreshers, please, or order the book. Uh, he's a great guy, great story, great publication, and his research is top class. Mm -hmm. So listen, uh, this is... Let me is just let him see if, he could, let's see if he has anything else. Okay, so yeah, uh, yeah. I, I was going there. Yeah. So uh, 
if we're gonna uh, uh, we're, we're gonna cut it and uh, but before we do, I just want to make sure there's uh, you have any closing words, my brother. I'm not just closing, but he was in the middle of something. Finish, let him finish whatever. He okay, was. Um, yeah. listen, um, I, I put a clock on it, but we're good. <laughs> okay. We're good. So listen, go on, go on and uh, let's finish just whatever. Let's that, close that it topic, out, yeah, and, and we'll go on about yeah. a, a short length longer, and then uh, we'll know it's on the way. Okay. Because we can go all day, we can go all day and all night with this because it's a great topic. But I don't, I don't want to make it to where. We don't have anything to talk about when he comes back. Because well, I'm saying, don't come back now. Because I want to come back. Believe me, he'll never run out of stuff I to talk about. I won't run out of stuff. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> okay. This is, to me, the basis right. that we're talking about. Every, to me, may, I may be wrong, that everything stems from morals, from um, morality, mm -hmm. from the individual, psychic, from the mind. So, if we can change how we perceive ourselves and each other, we can change the world. Yeah. And that's that's what I'm hoping that that you'll get from, from my book, from, from my from what I'm what our ancestors were trying to reveal. Right. That treat each other respectfully, even if someone does you wrong, turn the other cheek. If if we really are spiritual and non matter, we're we're matter as well, we're both. But you're eternal because you don't exist past your physical body. Are really be concerned are we to be really be concerned with temporary things that are not are gonna go away? Are you fighting over a marriage or a house? Those things will go away. <laughs> Fight for things that are everlasting, like your um, improve your like improving oneself that you can go to that person, whoever you're fighting with, and say, hey, I, I would like to change so that we can both have peace, mm -hmm. that we can get past this predicament so we can have peace in our family or whatever, and we can move on to something better. And we, we see each other and nature through a different lens. That's what I'm hoping is to change the lens that we were given is you can change that system. lens because mm -hmm. you have the power of transformation. Right. And I just want to say, because you talk about from the standpoint of morality, that um, I think the single most significant contribution that black Egyptians or African people gave to humanity is this concept of eternal life and that it is something you can achieve based on how you live your life in this realm. And so if you live a moral life. That's I think that's the fundamentally what they gave us: mm -hmm. how to live a moral life mm -hmm. and how to live in peace and all these things you just talked about. And if you can achieve that in this realm, then you will achieve eternal life in the afterlife. Okay. All right. This is uh, universal consciousness, where we promote love, light, and consciousness through conversation and information. So, until next time. Continue to grow in love, light, and consciousness. Okay. Listen, guys, it was a great, great topic, man. Yes, I, I love you. I love you coming on the show. I love you being a part of the network. And hey, baby, you did a great job. Yeah, great job. Thank you. Great job. Thank Sorry, you. my friend, my great brother. Job. All right. All right. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. Universal consciousness, yo. Universal consciousness. Conscious thought. You'll never know until somebody tells you so. <laughs> <laughs>